Hello, and welcome to the Comic Conspiracy episode 44. For, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, what today is? Today is February 6th. How's it going, guys? I'm Ryan Higgins. We're here for another fun filled episode talking about comics. Who else is here? Brock Sager. Hello, Brock. Who else is here? <laughs> Charlie West. Hey, Charlie. Who else is here? Toby. All right, we got a party. Whole big group of people. If, if, uh, Charlie is here, that must mean it's time for another check in on our, uh, least favorite time lost, uh, <laughs> Mutant who now looks like a Terminator. So uh, we'll, we'll we'll talk some cable in a little bit, okay, Charlie? Yep. We got a few things we want to talk about first. I guess we should start off since there was uh, apparently a big sporting event this last weekend. <laughs> uh, there were some comic book related things uh, involved uh, in this bo- game where people throw some. Ah, stop hating. Ryan. Sort of. Uh, Just because it's not you don't a like ball, it. right? <laughs> it's not a ball, right? Because it's not round. They do very little with their foot, so clearly it's not called football. So I don't know what the sport was called. Some teams played. Something happened. I didn't watch it. I was playing Star Wars: The Old Republic. Um, but uh, there was Brock is just like rolling his eyes at me. He's just he's just had it. Brock is just. I'll punch you in the face. Okay. <laughs> Why, dude? All you gotta say, the Super Bowl happened this weekend. You no, just, that's not you just like wasted like two minutes of my life, and I'm already pissed off about the 16 minutes you wasted earlier. Okay, okay. Well, see, I got all my Super Bowl jokes out of the way during the actual Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, during the Super Bowl this past weekend, there you go. That better. Yes. There was a couple of comic book related things. I think Toby specifically was super excited about this MetLife ad, which I yes. hadn't even heard of until today. Oh, come on, it's awesome. I mean, it was kind of cool, it. but like. Okay, I kind of went off on this. Was it like Geekbox? I think it was. I don't get the Super Bowl ad thing. Oh. I just, like, as a whole, like, like it's because people pay attention that day to it, yeah. so people spend money to put ads out. Yeah, so. and I, I mean, I get it, but it just seems kind of like, all right, it's ads. I mean, I, I'm, I, I mean, get- somehow, some way, back in the day, something happened that became the prominent Ad day, right? So mm-hmm. ever since that kind of, started, I mean, sure, maybe one day we have some other event that's going to be known for something else. So. Yeah, I, I mean, I get advertising for movies because okay, this is something that I'm going to go out and get. But like a MetLife ad, I'm not going to be like, yeah, that commercial was so badass. I'm going to get what? MetLife. Yeah, that people are talking about. Yeah. Which one was See? that though? Which one was that, Toby? It's the cartoon. It's the uh, cartoon all star one. Cartoon All Star. Yeah, you know Don't how MetLife it. always has Snoopy mm-hmm. in the past. Well, this time they have everybody else. Um, they got the Hanna Barbera characters. They had Voltron. They had He Man. They had. Oh, I think I briefly saw this. That it one didn't really awesome. impress me that much. No, it's awesome because it's, it's like a Cartoon All Star one. Instant failure for not having the Herculoids. That's all. I'm ah, saying. whatever. No, it was actually pretty clever. Cartoon. And then there's a bunch of spinoffs. If you go on the website, there's a bunch of like what happened in between takes. Like Voltron is like doing the robots. She starts dancing. Oh, really? Uh, the 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 cowboy starts shooting like some jacket and uh, there's a, a one of the Hanna Barbera it's, it's not the Pink Panther but it's pink also he's like a pink bear Snagglebus. is it I think it's Snagglebus yeah he, it? he's like talking to the director about how he's a big actor and you know you oh. should have him have lines and he had no lines in this commercial it's pretty darn funny what I find interesting is uh, the majority of those characters are old for us you could tell they're going they're not going for this like uh you know, I'm pretty sure that not, there's a money thing involved too. Well, yeah, but they're not modern, quote unquote, characters. They are. I mean, obviously, it's from yeah, health, and who, it's who, for life insurance. So yeah, it's, who's it's, gonna yeah get insurance? It's not gonna be the kids. What right. kid watching SpongeBob SquarePants is gonna think about life insurance? <laughs> well, what's pretty, gonna be? They're funny. gonna be thinking about scoring their next hit of crack. Well, what's what's gonna be funny is like you know in twenty thirty years when the you know all these you know modern cartoons you know when you see Ben Ten in a MetLife commercial that's yeah, how yeah. you know it's like oh boy. Yeah, but no, it was pretty funny. It was a pretty funny commercial. I really, I, I also like. There's a, a couple months or a year ago, there was another commercial for like a European yogurt. I think hmm. that was awesome too because I had like the Knight Rider car come out and then Yogi Bear was like jumping around and it was like this most randomest commercial ever. <laughs> that made no sense at all, but it had all these like '80s references and all these '80s characters, so it totally made my day. And you haven't like, seen this, Ryan? No, I. I don't really. It's like a, the Night Rider car came out, and, I was like, uh, <laughs> and then despite wanting my, because uh, when I grew up, you know, there was there was various forms of religious or, re- religious religion around the house, and I went to like one of these ca- uh, Catholic schools and stuff like that, uh, like after class. You know how you have like your name and your middle name and your last name, and there's like this like your saint what they name. Call them. Is that what it is? Yeah, it's it's a saint name. Now, despite wanting my saint name to be Kit. 
I'm actually not a really big Knight Rider fan. What is your Saint name? I don't have one. I never finished it. You never finished it? Uh, no. Uh, I, have what, I not? What would it have been? Well, I've told this story. Have I no, told the story? Talk on the, yeah, yeah, no, we it's don't pretty talk funny. On, on, in, no, in no, 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 no. This is a good it. story. I remember this one. This is pretty solid. He's never told me. Have I never told the story? It's quite on the air. Story. Oh, this is awesome. You have to tell the story. Okay, well, well, okay. I'll we'll do this, and we'll, we'll get back to the ads. Um, yeah. I, I'm not... Segway. I'm not anti-religious. Oh, this this really. is hilarious. It's totally comic book related, too. This is it, it awesome. Is. It is. But this, <laughs> and it actually segues nicely into our next subject. All right. Um, but uh, I remember the day very, very clearly. Okay, picture me being like 11 years old, 12 years old, or whatever. Getting out of high school, or getting out of high school, getting out of middle school, head to the comic book store, all right? This specifically was the day that Superman died. All right, okay, this was a big day. Obviously, I was at the store. That's actually the day I started working at the comic store, my very first job. Um, I mean, besides being like a paper boy. Uh, I was going to play D&D with some friends after work. You know, I was just helping out at the store because this guy was just swamped from the sales from, from the Superman 75. But I had to go to this, like, Catholic uh, – or this, this Catholic school thing between school and whatnot. So I get there. They would show these videos from time to time. This specific video was like the ways in which Satan has come into society and influences society, right? So the very first way is science fiction and fantasy, like comic books and superheroes, because, you know, Superman clearly is, you know, an alien from another planet, can fly, and Jesus, you know, and all, all this ridiculous stuff. And I'm literally sitting here with a copy of Death of Superman in my hands, all right? The next way Satan obviously influences society is through role-playing games like Dungeons and Dragons, as I am also literally sitting below that Superman book, a D and D second edition, you know, rule book that I was going to go play. Uh, you know, because you know people take on the role of the god, the dungeon master. Satanic cults play Dungeons and Dragons and sacrifice <laughs> virgins during their games. Right? <laughs> but of course, now if you can imagine this. Before I was in love with the 80s, I was in love with another time period in music, and that was the 70s. I was a big like, classic rock fan when I was a kid. My father grew up on it, so I grew up on it as a kid, right? So, of course, they start talking about the That's where it is. The evils. His look is confused. It's the, I was 70s rock, now I'm an 80s guy. It was, you know, of course, they, they start talking about you know, the evils of, of rock music, <laughs> and, of course, what is the most evil rock band of all time? Kiss. No. Not even. No. <laughs> Knights of Satan's service. Come on. Come on. Come on. Metallica? No. Oh, oh, way God. too late. Led Zeppelin. The most satanic band of all time. Stay right to heaven. I am also sitting there wearing a Led Zeppelin We Are Your Overlords t-shirt, <laughs> right? And like I'm sitting there, and I just stand up in the middle of class, and I'm like, I'm out. <laughs> Done. And I walked home, and I told my mom, and I'm like, look. This is what this is in this class. I can't do this anymore. She was like, "Eh, whatever." <laughs> but at the time, I was like, "No, this is effing ridiculous." You know what? I yeah. I, I want somebody to make like a short film of this. It, to be, th- yeah. I mean, I I have such a vivid memory of this event because it's just like this is the minute. This is the minute religion well, failed for I, me. I had something. I, just... I had something similar to that, but it more involves yelling at my mother and swearing oh. at my mother. But I was reading. I was sitting in high school. Sunday school class in the back, right? Because I wasn't participating in this pagan shit that's going on in front of me. Um, and uh, I was listening to Metallica while reading an Anne Rice novel. <laughs> and I was wearing, like, all black. Of course. And everyone's looking at me like, you need to be participating. I'm like, leave me alone. Yeah. And then I literally, like, snapped for some odd reason that day and walked out to the van. And my mom's like, what's wrong with you? And I was like, I don't fucking want to go to church yeah, she, anymore. You lasted longer than I did. You and, la- she was, and she was, I was like, out at like 11. So. And she's like, what? What? I'm like, I don't want to fucking go to church anymore. She's like, don't swear with me. I'm like, I don't want to fucking go to church. I was yeah. like 13 at 12 or 13 at the time. Okay. So you got a few more years yeah. than that. But, but it, was, it was hilarious. Yeah. I, I, whatever religion, whatever, people are free to do whatever they want. But it's like, if you're going to sit here and tell me that you can't play video games or, you know, read comic books because that's satanic, it's like, you're ridiculous. Anyway, anyway, go on. Go back on. to the ads. Back, back to this advertisement. Yeah. Another big ad. Obviously. Well, you got more, but there's MetLife. You want to pimp it? Do you, you like anything specific from it? Ah, uh, what on the MetLife one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoa, come on. It's obvious. I'm a big He Man fan. Yeah. So just him riding the tiger was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. It's, yeah, him riding the tiger. Yeah, black Battle Cat, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, that made it for me. But, you know, I like the little spin offs. Um, I like the. Uh, 
the dog commercial where the dog is too fat and he had to the like, Volkswagen work out. one. That yeah, one. That one then, was. They they actually they they had that online. Yeah, like before. a couple days before, and then like they go to a tattooing and they're yeah. in the bar well, and they was, talk about how last year's was better. It was great that they they paid homage to last year's Super Bowl ad. Yeah, like, yeah I liked great. I liked how they did. It's that. almost like their sequels. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I uh, I also liked the Clint Eastwood one, which is kind of... Oh, I hated that one. Really? That I kind of liked was, it. That one was way too overly political and way too stupid for something that was like, we need to create jobs. I'm like, I know it's Clint Eastwood talking. Yeah. Why is he in the dark? Well, I, I liked it because I liked the Eminem one that came before that one. Last year? Yeah, that was a oh, sequel. I didn't even that's watch a sequel that ad. That's I didn't a sequel watch ad. That. Oh, no, that's, that's a total the, sequel ad. That's the Chrysler one, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah the Eminem no. did the original one. After, I really after, the Jeep, one. after Jeep aired that ad where they had that like kind of thump, thump music, and it's like, we're in America, we build shit, and it's robots doing shit. I was like, yeah, we don't build shit. <laughs> like, yeah, no, you're stupid. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, no, back to like the car commercials that sucked. That uh, we're, not Chevy about, one. we're not talking about any other Super Bowl commercials except for the Avengers trailer because I, Super Bowl commercials are dumb. So Avengers trailer. No, the the Chevy tra- the Chevy truck trailer. No, was the apocalyptic one where whatever. you're like, oh my god, is this going to be an awesome new video stupid. game? Why are you even talking? The dumb. That's one. That's the shit that's stupid. Because like, I, like, what's the point? I, okay, well, it's, it's a Chevy commercial. As you Who already kind of covered it, it. I've seen X amount of Super Bowl commercials over the years that have inspired lots of nostalgia, similar to why Toby loves that one, between the MacGyver commercial from last year. There's a MacGyver is- commercial? <laughs> <laughs> I want to yes. see that one. There was a MacGyver commercial last year, which also led into some MacGyver appearances on Saturday Night Live. I want to see that too. Um, but the bottom line is none of them, as nostalgic as I get, actually makes me care about the content of what they're trying to sell. It's sort of like the Ferris Bueller was this year's fun, nostalgic little trip. What was the ad for? The CRV. Uh, Honda or something? Honda CRV. Yeah. Okay, but, I wouldn't even remember that. But yeah, that's it, sort of it looks point. a lot like it, your car. It doesn't, it doesn't sell anything. It just makes me go, hey, look, it's... Although I did, I did want to eat another bag of Doritos after seeing that great game. <laughs> okay. That was the shit. Now the other trailer has nothing to do with making a stupid trailer for the Super Bowl. The Avengers. Ha. Which sucked. Finally full-blown trailer. Brock, you were seriously the worst person that's ever it, existed. It, it sucked. I, I sat there and I was watching it going, oh, okay, it's just a whole bunch of screenshots. Nothing much is really going on. Yeah, I don't and it's over in like 10 seconds. I it's agree with price you. Price and a half. But no, okay. what you watched is the extra one. is the extended one. It's not what aired at the Super Bowl. I don't yeah. give two fucks what aired at the Super Bowl. I saw an Avengers trailer. That's all I care about. I agree with Brock in the way that, and you will probably love this about it. But to me, it's just a lot of the clips and stuff. I kind of feel like I've already seen from the general. Not all of it, mind you. I mean, uh, the Hulk see, stuff was new. I've remained this is why i remain completely <laughs> abo- i avoid all so why'd you watch this one well because i will watch two trailers <laughs> i watched the teaser and now i will see this trailer this is not the trailer t- though this is one yeah. trailer this is no, trailer this, is, well, this is the teaser trailer this is and, and once you clock a minute you're a trailer mm, well no my general point is well, i agree that they don't necessarily need, need to give away too much of the movie Sure. This didn't really give away anything other than, oh, oh look, the Hulk's in it. Yeah. I knew that. Some great action scenes. You know, just uh, freaking Iron Man flying up. That shot where it just circles around him all. That was really cool. It was just cool stuff. I, I... No, don't get me wrong. There was some cool stuff in the trailer. The extended that I saw online was amazing. But watching it, during the, but watching it during the Super Bowl. I don't care about I'm not talking it, about that. It was like going to the prom and saying, oh, you're going to go with this hot chick. And then it's not a hot chick. It's an ugly you know, okay, fat girl with pimples. Well, then why are you talking about that? Why don't you talk about the thing that I saw? Because we're is... talking about a reaction to the Super Bowl, which you didn't see exactly. But that's the reaction. No, we, to the bad. Super Bowl trailer, the real thing that's on the YouTube. That well, that's not the Super watches. Bowl trailer. It doesn't matter. Okay, yes, the real does. trailer. The real trailer. I thought it was badass. Whatever. <laughs> no. Did you chime in on this at all? Ah. Uh, well, I figured let the two fight it out, and by the time yeah, they're dead, yeah. I could put in my two cents. No, nah, you can't, it, it can't fight with somebody who watches cricket. Uh, I, well, see, I watch the Super Bowl here at the store on the computer, uh, live stream, right? <laughs> but they have different commercials on there. I, I watch, like, the Act of Valor uh, commercial, like, 
50 times at this point. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, going back to uh, Avengers, since Ryan is giving me the evil eye there. Uh, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> well, I don't want to go off topic here. Uh, he won't yell at you for going off topic. He'll yell at me no, for going off topic. No, he yells at me too. He'll yell at you for him going off topic. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or he, he gives me this stink eye sometimes. No, I'm kidding. Um, That's how he normally looks. Oh, it's true. <laughs> All right, no, I, I liked it. I enjoyed it. Um, I have a couple of problems, though, and it's nothing with the trailer itself. I, I feel like Captain America with the mask on looks like a dildo man. Yeah. I, I don't know why. I mean, the mask just looks so silly to me, and when he doesn't have his mask on, totally fine. Do you think he should have the top cut off with the hair coming out? No, 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 no. I, like, I don't, it's maybe because the cover his ears and they have actually some hard parts to the 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 you know face no, thing no, I don't know no the helmet basically the the cover basically forms like a little nub at the top like a little tip it looks like a penis I yeah, don't like it. it's I think if they cut from like the hairline down and l- give him a helmet or put the hair or something. yeah I mean he looked fine in the Captain America movie yeah, yeah, but yeah. in the Avengers movie he looks like a Dillman running around hey look at me and that uh, looks yeah, silly it's a little, but it's when little. he has his mask off he looks fine so yeah. uh, and then uh, penis on the brain I yeah. think. That, <laughs> I, well, much like Spider-Man and Iron Man and all these other movies, the amount of times they're actually going to be in the mask is going to be Yeah, but so see, in Spider-Man, little. it was a mask, right? See, I would have preferred this on here, too, but they had some harder parts on the face part yeah. that makes it look silly. And the other thing is, like, Black Widow with her little tiny gun while everybody's like, the Hulk is there, and then he, uh, he got the giant shield. and Well, that's Black Widow. I mean, she's yeah, always... Yeah, like, like a little teeny gun. It's like, click, click. Yeah, but, I mean, it's, it's minor. It's all minor. But, you know, Black Widow and Hawkeye are going to be the ones doing all the fist fighting, and Cap's going to be, you know, be... Yeah, I out. really like the shot where um, Black... Uh, no, Hawkeye flies backwards and yeah, starts yeah, yeah. shooting arrows. Yeah. That was pretty darn cool. And there's a lot of cool stuff in there. I really enjoyed it. Well, I, I think the thing that, you know, I should, I should actually mention here... Prior to 2002, three, when did Bendis take over? Like, Avengers was always one of my favorite comics, if yes. not my favorite comic. I, I mean, I mean, New Warriors and Sandman type stuff. I mean, that's... Yeah, but it's the one you've been trying side. to complete for years now. But Avengers is something that I've always had such a, a, a long run on. I've loved the Avengers. So it's great to see these characters out in, like, the actual, you know... And it is, like, the real event. I mean, Black yeah. Widow, eh, whatever, but that's fine. Yeah. But these are, like, the real characters, and I, I'm... No, I'm I'm glad they're finally Super doing it and doing the right Avengers. way. I mean, we had a cartoon that wasn't the Avengers, you know, so it oh, yeah. could have well, gone wrong. You like? Don't you like Earth's Mightiest Heroes? The cartoon? Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, I never watched it. Oh, uh, the new one? That's awesome. I oh, like oh, the new one? Yeah. No, I, I referenced in the old one. The oh. old one that had like Ant Man leading the team. Yeah, it was that's, like, that's yeah. Bad. That one doesn't exist. Yeah, yeah it doesn't. Avengers <laughs> United or something like yeah, that? Yeah, whatever it was, yeah. It. But I haven't watched a new one yet, Charlie. I, I Actually, I've been like you, I think, Ryan. I've been waiting on the complete season one yeah. as opposed to part one and part two. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I don't that's why this. I haven't seen it yet. I just make my own season sets at this point. <laughs> uh, but no, uh, I really, really enjoyed uh, the very end of the extended one where uh, Loki goes, we have an army. And yeah. Tony just smugly goes back. We have, oh, we have a Hulk. That yeah. was just like, that was excellent. That was like one of the best lines. Yeah. Yeah, that wasn't in the Super Bowl trailer. No, nah, I know it wasn't. That's what I just said. It was in the extended one. So it's good stuff. But yeah, we no. can't talk about the Super Bowl or Avengers trailer. Exactly. Because Ryan didn't watch it live. That's uh, right. I mean, that's false. I, yeah, like, I didn't watch the Super Bowl at all. I just made jokes all day while mm-hmm. on tour. Nice. Yeah, me too. Um, <laughs> you know, it was funny. Uh, I actually, because you were talking about Superman seventy five, I wanted to talk about this Death and Return of Superman video, but there was something else we needed to talk about first. And I can't believe this was less than a week ago that this got announced. And I feel like I've talked about it way too much at this point. But we never talked about it on the podcast. We didn't? So what? Watchmen 2 is official. Yeah, oh. whatever. It's not Watchmen 2. It's before, before Watchmen. Watchmen. Uh, whatever. This should actually, we should talk about this here for a minute. Um, for those unaware of this, uh, DC Comics back in the, the late 80s published what became the most successful graphic novel of all time. Uh People always say One Piece and Naruto and all this stuff sells way more. The thing with this is that's one book. Watchmen at this point, the estimated sales around 10 million copies of Watchmen alone. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I could be wrong, but I think even the best of One Piece hasn't sold 10 million copies. Um, maybe Volume 1 at this point, but that aside. Wait, how, uh, mil- how many? The estimated number for Watchmen is 10 million copies that it sold. And what was the other one? Since the graphic novel came out. Uh, people always say, "Oh well, One Piece and Naruto outsell Watchmen," but that's manga. But that's it's manga, and it's also like sixty volumes, so that yeah, or combined it outsells it. <clears throat> but that that's beside the point. Mm-hmm. Um, 
for, for American comic books, Watchmen is widely considered the most successful graphic novel of all time, written by yeah. Alan Moore, or by David Gibbons. Uh, became a somewhat successful, fairly controversial it, movie. It was a controversial movie because ago. they aired it as a they aimed it towards kids, but it was not a kids. Well, action they film. aimed it for kids. It's yeah, an R-rated well, movie. That's not. I never thought they aimed it at no. kids. They didn't really aim it at kids. No. but it did. stupid parents went, "Hey, it's a superhero movie. Yeah, oh, exactly. it's rated R. Well, I'll still take my kid. <laughs> oh, what? They're having sex. Oh, <laughs> hey. Oh, big penis on the screen. <laughs> um, so this blue card. Uh, uh, Alan Moore has long. If you since, don't listen, it's gonna go blue. <laughs> Alan Moore has it's long blown. since. Completely written off Watchmen. It wants nothing to do with it, uh, which I'm surprised it took DC this long to do. It's been rumored for a long time, but they're officially doing a series of books that take place before Watchmen, mm-hmm. appropriately titled mm-hmm. Before Watchmen. They are, as I run down this list here, Rorschach by Brian Azzarello and Lieber Mayo. Fucking A, man. <laughs> uh, the Minutemen, which is The Team, yeah. uh, by Dar- written and drawn by Darwin Cook. A Comedian by Brian Azzarello and J.G. Jones. Mm-hmm. Dr. Manhattan by Michael Straczynski and Adam Hughes. Night Owl by Michael Szerzynski and Adam and Joe Kubert, or I'm sorry, Andy and Joe Kubert. Ozymandias by Len Wein and Jay Lee, and Silk Spectre by Darwin Cook and Amanda Connor. Yeah. Now, I mean, I mean, there's no like Brian Michael Bendis, Jeff Johns, uh, you know, Jim Lee, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Graham Morrison names here. Azarello's pretty but, solid. But that's what I was gonna say. So take those guys kind of out of the out of the equation. You have some of the Best creative teams working no, in comic mean, books these days. You know me, Ryan. I I respect the Watchmen. I respect sure. the movie. I didn't care for either ever. I mean, you you, don't, you know this about me. I mean, yeah. I, I respect where it's, it is in history. I I know it's good. It just was never really my cup of tea. Yeah. Yeah. However, when they announced this, and I was like, hey, whatever. But then I looked at who the creators were. I was like, holy moly. I'm yeah. very interested. I mean, I think I was chatting with Charlie online. I was like, I'm actually really excited because these are some of my favorite. I mean, Lieber, Mako, and ba- Brian Azzarello, come on. Right. Th- these know. guys could be doing fucking My Little Ponies <laughs> comics for you all know. I care. And it's like, these are some of the best creators in the industry. Exactly. And they got uh, Amanda Connor. I mean, it, right. it's just awesome. Yeah, Adam I, Hughes doing interiors. Home DVC that. see that? That's right. like been 20 years. Uh, uh, Darwin Cook, you know, known for New Frontier and lots of kind of uh, retro style comics. Yeah, yeah is, very classic this guy. This is like a Silver Age take on the Watchmen characters before the, the, the book takes place. So this is sort of their origins going back to the early days with them. Do, do you, you know, I mean, what I've said about this is DC is not like a like a not for profit organization here. DC is a for profit company. Publish whatever the hell you want. You know, uh, name me one book from Marvel and DC that is you know acclaimed that has not had some sort of sequel or prequel or something to it. Hey, Marvels had Marvels too. Uh, I, the Eye of the Camera, Dark Knight has Dark Knight Strikes Back. You know, which is fucking terrible. You know, and, he, and even and for all intents and purposes, All Star Batman and Robin is, is like a sequel to Dark Knight. I mean, that's he, uh, Frank Miller came out and said that. Oh, you know, I like that one. Should, should no one have taken over Fantastic Four after uh, Stan Lee and um, and Jack Kirby left? Of course, people are going to take it over. It's it's ridiculous to argue that oh, Watchmen is this untouchable property. Well, a lot of the argument there just has to do with the fact that. The nature- don't say they're don't say they're original characters. No, because they're not. No, that's I, another I, huge I don't. I don't disagree about that. It's just the nature of the <sighs> contracts that were signed and stuff have to do with, as you said, it's the number one selling trade paperback of all time because before it. Stuff didn't tend to stay in print, and the nature of the contract... Well, there were no trade paperbacks, really. Yeah. I mean, Watchmen was and a real early trade paperback. The nature of the contract basically said that the rights to those characters would revert to him a year after they've been out of print. Well, right. they never went out of print because the market changed. You, you know, it's funny. I don't know where I saw this. Um, might have been on one of the Facebook groups. Might have been on, might have been on the Geekbox forum for all I know. Um, someone pointed out that basically since about the mid to late 90s, a lot of contract lawyers have been aware of the fact that digital distribution could cause major problems with things being in print, quote unquote, mm-hmm. and that you know stuff like oh, digital comics coming up in 2011, 2012. That's a new thing. Well, no, people have known for 15, 20 years that this was a thing. Yeah. Alan Moore, Dave Gibbons, these guys were aware of the fact, and so was DC. They're not stupid that this collected edition is something that may or may not take off as the time was still early, but but. You know, I'm not saying Alan Moore is wrong for feeling screwed. I'm not saying DC's wrong for doing what they're doing. It's just, it's, it's over, it's done with. The fans 
should have nothing to do with it, and DC shouldn't feel that they shouldn't do this book. They have as much right to do well, this no, as anything I'm, else. I'm just saying in general, I understand the sort of outcry just because that, honestly, you look at a lot of these legal issues that come up and people going back and fighting over the rights, and a lot of it has to do with what's considered the intent behind the contract versus what it ended up being just right. because as markets change, the expectation that went in you don't really have a meeting of the minds if the market says it should be roughly this time period and well you're the biggest the biggest problem with especially comic books and print media and music and all that stuff with copyright is that copyright no longer protects the mm -hmm. artist copyright protects a corporation right. Yeah. right it doesn't protect an artist and that's that's the biggest problem and, and you know we we've seen it in comics so many times and, you know, Alan Moore's just sick and tired of dealing with it. Yeah. And that's why he's blown off Watchmen. I actually am – the reason I was like, man, eh, whatever, is because DC is taking a, something that was amazing on its own and is now trying to tap into it later. Hold on. Let me finish. And it's like, yeah, they're putting creative teams on there. Yeah, it'd be cool to see these characters again. But I'm really not interested as I am in rereading Watchmen. And that's fine. But with with everything I already just said, I'm very excited because of the creative teams on a lot mm -hmm. of these books. So it's I don't really care enough to say, well, I'm going to boycott these books. It's just I do understand the other side of it being sort of the nature of the market and agreements made. And yeah, it always sucks when things change in the way that nobody back then expected. Well, here's food for thought. I mean, as a guy, like I said, I respect the Watchmen. Uh, you know, not bad mouthing at all. But if I read these new prequels, and I might really get into it. It might give me a different perspective of the original Watchmen. I might enjoy it in a completely different light. Yeah. This might push people to go and read the original, which I think is all good. I mean, it's not like DC was like, hey, let's cash in. Let's just put these books out and oh. have whatever creators yeah. on there. No. You know, I mean, I'm sure there's a cash in value, but they put some solid creators pumping, on these books. Pumping a, oh, a big announcement for retailers. This is going to be huge. This well, is it, it's it's hyping the shit. Well, no, I mean, this. they got to hype you in my bottle. Of course, what? they have to hype it. It's you know, no, it's, it's, it's a for-profit company. No, but I understand they, they're for-profit. They put company. some really, really solid teams on. Right? These no, rights. I don't. Yeah. I'm not just. I'm not. Yeah. Rob Liefeld and Chuck Austin are doing these books. I mean, Thank these God, are, these are good creators. Here's here's my thing. Okay. There is no doubt on my – so I'm looking at here. It looks like there's mixes of four and six issue issues uh, – four and six issue series. It looks like there's about 40 issues total. There's no doubt on my mind, regardless of the internet blowback for this, regardless of some people like, fuck, you see, I'm never going to buy it. There's no doubt on my mind that these 40 issues are going to be probably 40 of the top 100 selling uh, single issues in 2012. There's, there's no doubt on my mind. DC has taken what is what is a fantastic opportunity with the new 52 to expand on their line. Yeah. Um, Watchmen was always a very consistent seller here at the store. I'd always sell about 10 to 20 copies a year pretty regularly, a couple copies a month, all over and over and over, because mm -hmm. there's always someone that hadn't read it. What happened when the Watchmen movie came out, there was so much press around the book. They sold a million copies of Watchmen the year the movie came out. I mean, not, yeah. not shipped, sold. sold. That's a huge number. The last couple of years, I've only sold a handful of copies of Watchmen. In fact, I sold a copy of Watchmen this weekend. I hadn't sold a copy since June of last year. Or of 2011, yeah. All right? So we're talking yeah. like seven, eight months since I've sold a single copy of Watchmen. There was no doubt about it before the movie. What's that? It was doing better before the well, movie. Well, well, sort of. I sold so many copies when the movie came out. We yeah. literally tapped out the entire audience. What I think DC – and I'm sure DC has seen something very similar. Mm -hmm. They've said, look, we need to get eyes back on Watchmen. I'm sure this is a multi-layered – we can do this book. We can have these before Watchmen titles. And the – 500,000 copies of Watchmen we have sitting in a warehouse, this is going to... I mean, I already ordered like 20 more copies of Watchmen yeah. To, yeah. to make like a little display bef yeah. before, before Watchmen <laughs> yeah. ships. Before, before, before Watchmen, read Watchmen so you can read Watchmen before you read before Watchmen. That's my tagline. There you go. Um, so you just need to... You know, this is... Like, like I always said, this is for profit. This is money... Before Watchmen doesn't destroy Watchmen. Well... St the Star Wars... You know, one, two, and three for all. I mean, it's, sometimes it's a little hard to see, you know, Darth Vader. But if you go back to those original cuts, they don't destroy the original cuts. The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen doesn't destroy the original 
novels these are based on. It, it's I, I can't get behind the fact that you can't do sequels and prequels and, and expand on stuff. Well, have it when are, ruin when, it. When are these forty titles being released? Uh, it's weekly, starting in uh, the summer, I think June, June, July. Yeah, they haven't announced it yet. I think they want to make sure that they're ready for all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, I'm assuming it's just the summer. Well, here, here's my thing for all the guys who are against it: just don't buy it. It's right, as simple sure. as that. I mean, if you don't like it, don't yeah. buy it. Don't yeah. look at it. And sure. DC will not do it again. Simple as that. Sure. And when these are 40 of the top 100 bestsellers of the year, guess what, boys? Before Watchmen 2 is coming mm-hmm. out next year, so you can hate <laughs> on it some more. Yeah. But, I mean, I don't I mean – I'm surprised they haven't done a Dark Knight series at this point without Frank Miller's involvement. You know, I mean, why not? What does it matter? Who cares? You've expanded on every character concept you've ever had. Just do more of it. If it sells, yeah. cool. If it doesn't, then don't do it. Well, it's actually one of my favorite episodes of all time in The Batman. And it was Charlie that showed it to me. It's when they did the whole Dark Knight yeah. thing and they went into that, that world and stuff. I was like, just yeah. saw it. And they yeah, basically yeah, yeah. expanded on that. That right. was cool. All right, all right. Yeah, they've done a lot of nods over the years to that Frank Miller story. Yeah, and, and they yeah. had like Nightwing in that episode and stuff. That was just like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's awesome. always going to be. It, that is the thing about fiction is you can expand on. I mean, look at Hollywood. Something like. Something like 29 of the 30 top movies of last year were all sequels, prequels, something like that. Is yeah. that am I, 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 And so, then yeah, look at all the fairy tale movies that are coming out. There's like five right. different Snow Whites from all the studios are coming it's out. Just, right? It's like whatever. It's all over the place. You can't. Yeah. Disney has made sequels to every movie they have. They've all directed DVD or whatever. But yeah. every movie has had a sequel or nine at this point. I mean they've all had TV shows. Like, you can't get away from this stuff because if it doesn't sell, they won't do it. And I think that's the end of the day. If it doesn't sell, they won't do it again. But yeah. obviously they sell because people like them and they buy them. So that's all I've got to say about that. <laughs> all right. Now something else Brock, hate, Brock hates. This is not a Brock day. Huh? It's what? not a Brock day. <clears throat> oh, Brock will, have, Brock will have some minute here. What? Oh, you'll, have your, you'll have your minute. Oh, jeez. Uh, so this past weekend, uh, a movie I'm very excited to go see, Chronicle, yes, opened up. that looks interesting. By Max Landis, uh, who is a uh, son of, um, st- uh, what the hell's his face? Well, it, it did really good. I mean, oh, it, did it? It blew, like, all expectations away. Wasn't it, isn't it limited showings? Or? I don't know what it was. No. I just read an article. I mean, I usually keep an eye on, you know, how movies yeah. do, and yeah. they said they, they blew away expectations. No, oh, uh, John Landis, son. Yeah. Max Landis. Um he created uh, – yeah, well, the, well, this Chronicle movie looks fantastic, and I'm going to see it on Thursday, so we'll talk about this next week. Uh, no, it's kind of a found footage. Oh, shit. i got to go watch this now. I'm not yeah, I'm not well, sure. No, i got to try I, and I don't watch know. it. I, I, I don't it's know. It's like a found footage Akira-style yeah, superhero I story. Know. I just don't know. But, but, yeah, go see it. And if you like it, maybe I'll check it out too. Yeah. I'll yeah, yeah, put yeah. it that I'll, way. I'll talk about it next week. All right. Um, but he did as sort of a little – Pimp for for Chronicle, uh, this Death and Return of Superman kind of fan film that he made. He's actually done a number of these before on a much lower budget. I actually haven't watched them. This is the first mm. one I've seen. I didn't know the others existed, but it might be kind of cool to check out. Uh, but he did this like 16 minutes sort of snarky, tongue in cheek sort of explanation about the Death and Return of Superman, the the famous comic series from mm. the, the early 90s. Uh, while pretty funny. It's been getting some kind of mixed reactions from comic fans, and, and I, I, I did want to address a, a number of points on this thing for anyone that's seen it. So if you haven't seen it, I would suggest pausing this, going to watch this. Just search for Death and Return of Superman video. It's on YouTube. It's got Lose a, 16 minutes of your life it's got a half, half, and then half, come back. It's got half a million <laughs> views at this point. It's been up for a few days. Go watch it. I have to say, Dirac, that, um, yeah, when you linked it to me at work, I'm like, I don't freaking have time for this. I watched like two <laughs> seconds of it. I'm like, what the hell is this? I yeah. can't watch yeah. it. I don't think I would have watched the whole thing if it wasn't for you showing it. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's- well, how did you feel about the two and a half hour thing I linked you? Which one? The Alan Moore video. That uh, was two and a half hours long? Yeah, that was two and a half hours. I didn't watch that. He was ranting for two and a half hours? Yes. Uh, we, do a, wow. we do it for an hour and a half every yeah. week. What do you want? No, uh, but this is Alan Moore being all crazy looking. As someone that has sat through the Red Letter Media Star Wars reviews like four or five times each, like, trust me, I can watch this shit all day, so I'm fine with it. I mean, I've, I've spent probably a hundred hours on that site watching all his videos over and multiple times, oh, yeah. showing multiple people. I've seen this Death and Return of Superman thing like four times already. Wow. Um, well, it might be also because I was at work and I was like, I don't have time to deal yeah, with this. But yeah, yeah. but I, well, and Charlie, I didn't even click on the link. I just read the article like glue, and then then I, I double checked with you to see what the article was about. 
there were a couple points I wanted to make on this video that I, that I think are worth talking about. But but overall, what do you, what do you, what, do you, what were you guys' thoughts on it? I'll go last. <laughs> yes, you can do go it, last. Do it. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay. curious. I'm curious. Um, we'll, we'll get into the more nitty gritty of some of the points that he brings up during this video, but but give me kind of an overall. We'll we'll hit my talking points and we can add on to it. To me, my general sort of reaction to this video is very sort of hot and cold. There's parts of it I really like. There's parts of it that amuse me because he. <sighs> It's almost like he went and read a bunch of different forums and stuff to put together this video. So some of the stuff I've heard a billion times before. Some of it I'm like, yeah, he's over-dramatizing this because I've watched actual stuff about this. But, I mean, all in all, it had its moments. I particularly like the Green Lantern part. And it just kind of reminds me again of why sometimes I hate the way things are marketed. Sure. Uh, now, now, Toby, you wouldn't. I mean, you had no idea when I showed you this. What's this no? Was, so, so what would be? We... Well, well, when you first showed it to me, I thought someone did like a short film. That's why when I clicked it today at work, and I was like, "What the hell is this? Is some dude talking? I don't want to see this." I was excited at, at first, but they was like, "I don't have time for this." Um, well, you showed it here right before the podcast, and I was amused by it. On the other hand, I'm like. I knew it wasn't great. I never said it was great. Why yeah. the hell would I watch something about someone ranting about that wasn't great? I mean, it's like, sure. I don't think I'll watch it again. You know, um, I always, always said that Death of Superman would have been a lot better if he stayed dead. Like, or don't even bring him back for like five, six, seven, eight <clears throat> years. And just like, yeah. have the wor- I mean, to me, the, the story would have been far more interesting if the story was how the world deals without a Superman. Not replacement Superman, none of that. Just like how they would deal without Superman. Right. They could still do like miniseries with Superman alive and stuff like that, you know, before he died and stuff like that. But sure. to me, that was always like kind of a cock out that they just brought him back. You know, I always felt yeah, like yeah, yeah. they should have just kept going with it. That would have been far more interesting for me. <laughs> I didn't really care how they killed it. To me, a dead Superman was very interesting. However, the stories were never dead. I mean, he was dead for a while, and they had the whole you know funeral for a friend. And yeah, so, yeah. yeah. the funeral for a friend is one of my favorites. Yeah, you so know, so it's, it's there. yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I, and since the stories were never really that good for me, I never really read them. So today, as you guys saw me, you were like, "Wait, this is what happened. This is what he was about. I didn't even notice." You know, so I was like, "Well, well you're a really they, big Connor Kent fan." I am. I never liked that Connor Kent. Okay, with the, I with mean, the I know, I know where he came from. I didn't, I didn't care for Connor Kent at that point. You like him because he hung out in Hawaii for a long time. No, that's not that's oh, not it either. I like him because he wore a black shirt and jeans, and that was it. So you didn't care about him until like the Jeff Johns. Teen no, Titans yeah, stuff. absolutely. <laughs> I did not. I mean the. The Jeff Johnson Titans made me love that guy, cool. and I'm a big fan now. But before that, no, I couldn't care less about Superboy. Well, I'll be honest about it. Just to sort of give you a little bit of clarification, for those of you who only read The Death and Return of Superman, they touch on stuff in that video that happened in sequel, prequel books that they yeah. put Did out. Did I put it all together? There, yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. If you don't remember stuff too, you don't need to go back and read those books to figure it out. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, because all the stuff like the origin of Doomsday, that wasn't told till years later. Yeah, that, yeah, that was the Hunter Prey. Right. Mm. Right. Yeah. No. Um, What's your take, bro? Come on. Hit me. Hit me with it. I want 16 minutes of my life back. All right. Hate, man. Hate away. I'm, it, <laughs> it's not Marvel. It, it, I mean, it really felt like somebody just decided that they wanted to dress up in costume, act ridiculous, and give me a fanboy rant from somebody's stupid thesis that they turned in and got an F at at college. It So it was like you were working at the shop. Basically, yeah. Um no and people it, it, dress up here? Yeah they do. <laughs> um you miss Black Canary? No, no, I saw that. Okay. But it wasn't like some crazy cookie man that Well it's was... it's one of those it's one of those things where if you are trying you're ranting and making a point and making a joke, but it it, it, it goes t- past the extreme. Where it's like, okay, now you're just being ridiculous for the sake of being ridiculous, and yet you're not really making any point in being ridiculous. You're just trying to be funny when you're giving me a rant. Sure, sure. And the only person that's done rants really well in life is, you know, um, why am I blanking on his name? Damn it. Smith? No. um, Dennis Miller is the only one that I can think of that does legitimate funny rants. Oh, okay. funny rants. Well, um, that's funny. But it's the death of Superman. Like Charlie Tar- and I were talking about this briefly before, after we watched this abysmal piece of crap. Is that 
the death of Superman was really, really good. Like it was, yeah. it hit you. It was what was needed for the character. You know that build up of just everybody's being thrown against Doomsday and nobody can stop him, and then Superman tries to stop him. And yes, I mean that's what happened. Then we get the iconic, you know, images, the splash page where Lois is holding, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, Superman's body, and it's like boom, and you're like, oh shit. And then we have Funeral for a Friend, which is that nice kind of one of my favorite aftermath, calm, which is one of my the, the calm before the storm, so on and so forth, where we're yeah. reflecting on who he was and what we're missing out on, so forth. What he meant. But when you have that reign of Superman, it's like Charlie and I discussed. It's they thought about the death and they thought about the mourning period, but they didn't think of what the fuck they were going to do afterwards. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. honestly, I I saw the reign as almost see. We give Marvel a lot of shit from time to time mm. on this podcast. <laughs> from time to time. And to me, part of this is just a general sense I get from a lot of comics, not just Marvel. It happens at DC also. Things start dragging on. They take too long. The emphasis of the story gets lost. And by the time you get to the end, you're kind of like, okay, at least it's done now. Mm. And that's part of what is kind of with the rain. It kind of had that sort of initial buildup of, okay, this is where the return of Superman is going to start. It's going to be one of these four characters and that's how everything was being marketed. And that's not what it ended up being. And it just kind of went on and on. And my favorite thing to come out of it was the whole parallax, Hal Jordan stuff. So. Huh, nice. Hmm. Well, yeah, that, I mean, that's where that came from. So if you yeah. like Jeff Johns, Green Lantern, you owe it to the death of Superman. Yeah. Read, yeah. read issue Superman, what, 80? No, no. 82. There, there's a handful of stuff in this. I, I thought th- I thought this video was pretty clever. There was some really funny stuff in it. Yeah. But overall, I, I my issue with this and Brock, I kind of want to I'm not not to not to honestly bug you too much about this, but That's the things that bothered me in this video are sort of the same sort of things that bother me in things like Big Bang Theory. Oh, whoa. It's it's whoa. Gross. <laughs> whoa. It's, it's a no, gross no. oversimplification and and laughing at comic book stuff. Instead of laughing with comic book stuff, I, I got a very. There was some stuff that I considered kind of a negative vibe in that that made me kind of a little bothered by it. Now there was really funny stuff in it, but but when you have to look at comic books, they're they're by nature ridiculous. I mean mm-hmm. that's the point of it. You kind of know this going in, so it's kind of like you're making fun of something that you don't need to make fun of it because it's like we're all, if you're accepting of Superman, you're accepting of the entire genre. Mm-hmm. And it's it's sort of like, well, this is a conceit of the genre. It's not really funny because it, we we are all aware of this. Yeah. So a couple points I wanted to kind of touch <laughs> on here. Let's go this one by one. We can all kind of throw it. Well, I want to I, I want to say how how Big Bang Theory is not as ridiculous as this was. But I, it, ha- it has the same sort of what oh, I feel, no, it's not what the same I feel, feel to be a negative connotation. No, this is a blatant negative connotation. Big Bang Theory is more of just a Laughing. nerds in general and so well, stereotype it's, it's not a it's a very similar thing to my to my in my mind but how is a stereotype and a blatant like so, attack so the same there's a couple things your dick um Bag. one all right one of the <laughs> one of the things that uh I, I thought was was interesting in here and this is something that's actually been reported on some of these things are, are well-known facts within the comic industry so it's weird that you kind of want this kind of weird goofy quirky way but i mean it's for laugh so it makes sense um the whole part of the beginning with kind of like the media. Well, I actually, I want to start off where he starts off with like no one cares about Superman, which is which is totally ridiculous. Yeah, because Superman is the one of the most, if not the most, uh, famous fictional characters of all time. Not uh, to mention later on in the video, he specifically says everybody cares about Superman. <laughs> right, yeah, right, which exactly. Is kind of funny. Yeah, yeah. It was this sort of dumb line. Everyone does care about Superman. Now, do they specifically care about the Superman comics? No. Everyone likes Mickey Mouse, despite probably never seeing any actual Mickey Mouse original cartoon. Yeah, I've mean, right. seen Superman. Some of them. I like Superman. Steamboat Willie. Yeah, yeah. that's good. I but, watch a lot of them. But yeah. how many people have really seen that? Yeah, that, yeah, are, that are know. under the age of like yeah. eighty. You know, not anybody many. who's wandered into that little theater at Disneyland. Yeah, sure. <laughs> they did a Valentine's Day special once that I used to watch as a kid. I really liked that had Mickey in it. But it's it's kind of it's kind of it was kind of a ridiculous way to. You, I mean, you already got me off on a bad start, but saying no one cares about Superman. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of weird. I think that's why I didn't want to watch it late. Right. 
right. I mean, when he when he showed it to me, that's right. kind of what turned me off right well, away. Well, that that whole scene with the kind of the DC editors, where he, I know this is kind of dumb, totally nitpicking this parody thing, but I think these are things that that non comic book fans probably actually think. And it's sort of like it kind of just gets on my nerves that we're fighting this stereotype already, and when something like this goes and reinforces those stereotypes, yeah. that's what I'm. That's what makes you mad. Which is again the same Big Bang. Theory. No, that that that's that where I, the, the reinforcing stereotype that I can I can, but the ridiculousness of it, it, Big Bang Theory doesn't go through the ridiculousness of it. I mean, Charlie, I mean, you have you watched it? I've watched the first season. Maybe first. Oh, but this isn't about half. Big Bang Theory. We're not talking about Big Bang. Theory. We're talking about this. <laughs> well, no, no, no. The, the oh, thing is, is. You brought Big Dang Bang Theory up. I you want to watch this show. Now I'm un- You are a hick. Hey, give me credit. I've been staying out of this one. <laughs> now, now, now I'm unbringing it up. Okay. So that, that whole, that whole scene with the DC editors. Where the forum post. That whole, that whole scene with the DC editors. They're like, oh, how do we make Superman relevant? This, is ne- this was never an issue. I mean, I mean, this has been widely reported as well as in no, other parts it's, that it's, I'll bring it's up in, later. It's in a couple of the documentaries on comic books and especially on DC's 75 years. Right. Um, the origin of the DC comics whatever that one they talk about how they were sitting in a lull and they didn't know what was going on with comics and they tr- they were trying to shake up the well, market well, well they had joked about killing superman like every week yeah. what are we doing this week well let's kill superman all right now what are we going to do and this is something they finally said fuck it why yeah. don't we let's see what happens it was not an intention of and, and well there's another point later where um uh, where he was like, oh, they're rolling in the money and stuff like this. DC was scared shitless by the success and the press from Superman 75 because uh, I'm kind of jumping around here in the points, but the point was to kill him and bring him back right away. Yeah. That was always the plan. They were like, oh, let's do it, whatever. He'll come right back. This whole like death and return of Superman and the funeral for a friend, this really came out kind of at a last minute thing. This was not as planned to be as big of an event as we were t- you know, yeah. we kind of draw this out because the success of Superman 75 blew everyone's well, mind. That went to what four printings? <laughs> at least. Yeah, that and went, went to like crazy four printings. Of- well, well what happened is, you know, uh, again, uh, again kind of jumping into something later in the video where he says, you know, s- you know, after Superman came back, sales plummeted, right? Well, sales didn't plummet. Sales went back to pretty much oh, what they were before, or actually yeah. a little bit higher. Um, well, hold, hold on. Let, let, let me, let me, let me kind of go in order here. So this, this, this <laughs> thing with the DC editors it was, it was a little blown out of proportion. Okay. That, yeah, that, the, the that DC is, editors, yeah, and, and the fact that you're bringing up Marvel at the same time with like, oh, let's bring up something that looks like Grey Hulk. Is there a sure. Grey Hulk? And, 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 you know, they're doing this ridiculous system. Like, okay, if you're, Talking about Superman, just stick with DC. Don't give me any yeah. cross uh, over uh, with characters. But the, whatever, that didn't bother me. Um, the next part, which is just total little nitpick, but they were like, "Oh, we're introducing new characters, like the Guardian." The, the Guardian was created in 1942 by by Jack Kirby. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the Guardian's been around as long as Superman, basically. So that was just a dumb little nitpick, but I thought it was worth mentioning. Um, uh, yeah, but going back to the DC being scared of the success, they were. I mean, they were being interviewed. They were getting death threats. There was a yeah. success, this push from Warner Brothers in DC to like keep this going, keep this going. They're like, oh, oh, we don't like. Oh my God, okay. Well, what can you, we? They do? opened Pandora's box and couldn't close it again. Right. They had. They were totally unaware that this was going to be the response. They figured it would just be another issue. It would sell all right, and then and then it just became this huge media sensation, this huge thing. Everyone was talking about it. The joke always was, if anything important had actually happened on that day. No one would have cared because the news wouldn't have talked about it. But the news talked about them killing Superman, and it became a much bigger yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, and stores, I mean, stores were totally unprepared for this. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the podcast, I was I started helping out a store when I lived in Massachusetts because of this. Because he had like a hundred people in his store that's like a quarter of the size of our store mm-hmm. here, um, if you could believe that. And, and like no one ordered enough. The reason it sold out so fast was because stores themselves were totally unprepared yeah. by the civilian reaction to this comic book. Which, well, well it's it's it, it's what spawned <laughs> spawned the the horror that is the death since, which is like with the death death of Captain America. That was ah. on CNN. Uh-huh. We'll, we'll, t- no, we'll, that's a little yeah. different. That's we'll, a little different. But not only that, we'll talk about that part in in a minute. Yeah. So we'll talk about the death the the, the, the Marvel death, death yeah. thing in Deaths. a minute. <laughs> I actually want to share a story just because you're talking about the sensationalism of yeah. that particular issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I didn't even get the first printing because at the time I was mainly reading trade paperbacks that like my mom would bring or like my grandmother signed me up for like a Spider-Man um, subscription at house. So they were mailed to me. That's probably one of the first times I had like fully gone into a comic store to buy a comic because my dad just drove me after school one day to go buy the like second printing of the death of Superman. And yeah, I started going to that same comic shop almost weekly after that. Cool. Cool. Yeah. I couldn't even, I remember, I remember the first, the first time I read it was the third printing. Yeah. That was the first time I could get my hands on it, yeah. which I read it was the third printing. And I wanted to read everything prior, but everything prior was sold out, and it was going for yeah. 15 20 bucks an issue, not to mention the fact that the death was going for, at the time, like 30 40 bucks. Yeah, I never read all the prior stuff till it came out in trade. Mm-hmm. The same here? Yeah. Well, I was still in Europe at the time, and I was probably a couple of years later than all you guys. Plus, I didn't have no clue because there's no way of knowing. You know, there's no current Superman imprint in German. You know, the first one I bought was, or the first one was given to me was the Superman versus Terra Man thing. And then I was at a, a, a train station and I saw the trade of World Without Superman and it blew my mind. You know, it was like, I have to have it. So I bought it. I didn't know it was in English. <laughs> and at the time, I didn't, I didn't speak a word of English. So I, I, lit, I just looked at the pictures and I was like, He's dead. <laughs> He's dead. It, like it blew my mind. It was like a big thing, and it was uh, you know, I, I was sad. I was very, very sad. I mean, but then on the other hand, it was very interesting to see all the other heroes getting together, what they would do, mm-hmm. you know, when Superman is not around anymore. So it was, it was a really big part of my comic book history because it was one of the first books I bought myself, and I was like, holy sh- shit, <laughs> Superman is dead. You, you, can, know? you can swear on this podcast. Yeah. It's okay. It's encouraged. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Violent aggression can be aired on this podcast. Violent aggression. Mm. Okay, so. Oh, oh yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, we're waiting. That was my story. That was my story. Start spouting yeah. other sorry. things. Yeah, yeah, no, no. I just, um, yeah. I mean, I don't have a, a heck of a lot. Uh, well, you say. have a list. Well, no, 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 list. no, no, no. I was gonna say I don't have a heck of a lot to say uh, for that there. Um, but uh, going forward, uh, this this comes to the Superman. Um, you know, oh my God, I can't believe they actually brought Superman back. Superman was never dead. I mean, previews, the solicitation was Superman Returns and Superman and, and Adventures of Superman 500. I, I mean, this is always the plan. Mm-hmm. There was never a minute where Superman wasn't coming back. Sure, they milked it out a hell of a lot longer than they yeah. had originally planned to, but but there was never an issue of Superman coming back. It was it was a matter of when, not, not, not if. Mm-hmm. Um, anyone, the average civilian... That looked in a comic stand a, mu- a year later and Superman's back. Like they weren't buying comics prior to that. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, so that's there just wasn't. Uh, this was anyone actually reading comics knew that Superman was not gone. Yeah. Um, and this comes to the whole, you know, oh, we said like the death of Captain America and all that. Killing Superman didn't kill death, as he implies no. in this video. Uh, we'd seen. At, even prior to that, numerous heroes die in Quebec. It may have made this a, pop, a little more popular in the mainstream audience. Sort of, oh, they killed and bring back characters. But we had we had multiple characters die and come back prior to that. Phoenix probably been back four times at that point. You know, like she dies all, every other week. <laughs> you know, um, they they kill characters on, on a pretty regular basis, even before the death of Superman. So that to me, especially ominous death scenes by villains. Sure, sure. Every villain died at the end of every issue and well, came back. When six did months later. when did Bane break Batman? It was like a year or two later. Yeah, it was like a year later. Yeah. So I mean, they didn't kill Batman. Mm-mm. Um, was that just a year later? It was a year later. Yeah, yeah I remember they were like resolving pretty... that round about the time as they oh, were resolving. That's where we got a year Superman. later. Yeah, that's you know, where we got a year later. You know, and actually, it's funny because there was one other. Um, uh, there was actually kind of one other interesting point that he brought up that sales plummeted after Superman seventy five, or I'm sorry, after they brought him back, yeah. right? Which is what that Adventure eighty two or, or Superman eighty two was that the issue Depends he actually came on back in? When you define he's coming back, since they had the white, they had the white bag, bag one, one where it's like implied that he's coming back, and well, then he more physically than implied it. They kind of said, "Look, he's coming back," and then they. Took uh, seven months to bring him back or whatever, but but that aside, hence my general frustration with the marketing behind the reign of Superman. Sure, sure. Well, if you, you know, so I'm looking on um, um, Comicron. I don't know if any of you guys go there. It's Comic H R O N 
It's a comic comiccron dot com. It's a very great set about sales charts. It goes back to sales charts all the way to the sixties to current. He uses as much data as possible. Hmm. Doing a quick look here, um, you know, Superman seventy five was the best selling comic in two thousand. Uh, I'm sorry, in nineteen ninety two. Action comics. <laughs> Uh, Action Comics 687 was the best-selling comic in, in 1993, and uh, where What was, happened in 687? Uh, that was just one of the other parts of it. That was the... Which one was that? That was one of the Back from the Dead issue. Uh, mm. So, uh, you know, looking here, uh, 501, Adventure Superman 500, all of... Basically, every part of Superman was in the top-selling charts for like two or three years. If you go back to 1991, which many people will remember is sort of like X-Men, the birth of the really the X-Men universe, the McFarlane Spidey, uh, you get the early uh, – was that Spawn? Did Spawn hit at that point? No, I don't no, think Spawn, Spawn was 93, 94. Three, yeah. Was it 93? That's okay. when I was really confused coming into the comic. I'm looking at 91 here, right? With the exception of like Batman vs. Predator, which is like by Dark Horse, in the top 100 books, there's like five DC books. All the rest are Marvel. You suddenly pop over to 1994, and suddenly you're getting – I mean, obviously a lot of image. But you're getting a little healthier mix of DC, including – oh, surprise. Look, every action er, – every Superman comic is yeah. in like the top 100 sales chart. And uh, at least one of them is on the top 100, and a good chunk of them are all in the top 300 for all the series combined. Um, if anything, for many years, this helped the sales of Superman. Um, his sales were worse prior to this, and, and for many years, the numbers went, stayed at a higher rate. Um, Superman, the comics have never been the best sellers prior, you know, really, except for the death of Superman stuff. But to say that that fans were outraged and that sales plummeted is 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 extremely out of it's just in, just incorrect, yeah. basically. Uh, Casual fans that never bought a comic since and never bought a comic prior may have been outraged, quote unquote, the same way fans are outraged when Wonder Woman gets her hair cut who have never bought a comic in their life on the mm-hmm. internet. And the same way people get outraged because they bought something because it was supposed to go up in value. Uh, and right. Then... Of course. Of course. Yeah. Fans were outraged. Their comic that they could have sold for $100 the day he died, no one would buy 10 years later their box of 100 of them. I, we I actually mean, got that. Uh, I, I mean, I've got, a, I've got you know, a... a 50 copies of the death is or 10, mm-hmm. 20 copies uh, of death about is 20, yeah, 20, yeah, 25 in the back. It's like from it's just, one person. No, they yeah, were, no, well, no, we had before you bought that bunch of Frank Miller daredevils and the gold wildcast number one, which thank you for that, by the way. Um, there was like 25 death of Superman's in there. And I think we maybe had one or two, one in the store. I don't remember there being that many, but it's possible. It's possible. But this video funny i suggest recommend i suggest checking it out i'm actually going to make it our sort of video uh slash image for this podcast so you could just go on geekbox.net and click on it right there it's pretty funny i think it's worth watching i think it's funny however take parts of this with a huge grain of with salt a bag of salt just fast forward to the green lantern part and it'll <laughs> be okay ring shit the green lantern part is pretty funny and fairly accurate as well which, <laughs> which, which he gets some he gets some funny stuff in this uh, i mean there is really funny bits to the and uh, well, we didn't even talk about the people that are in it um who, who's in it uh Mandy um, Moore is Lois Mandy Lane. Mandy Moore is Lois Lane. Um, Simon Pegg plays uh, uh, uh the guy's parental figure dad yeah um Frodo, what the hell's his name? Uh, uh, Stupid, Elijah, Wood. Elijah, Elijah Wood. Wood plays Cyborg Superman. There is a one or two other people there that looked yeah. familiar. I don't remember who they all are. Well, Ron Howard Ron was Howard a, has a little the cameo. end of it. Yeah. So, so, I mean, there, there's, it is a funny little video to watch, but but be aware that it is not entirely accurate. And, 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 and not entirely of, accurate? It's not accurate. Well, <laughs> you're right, but... but it I is, mean, it's, it's a fair interpretation in... in somewhat ridiculousness of the death of Superman story and the reign of Superman and stuff like that. But again, it's like if we didn't have that, we wouldn't have had Hal Jordan go crazy. You know, we wouldn't have had that coast city get annihilated. So there's, well, there's things that came out of the death of Superman that affected the DC universe even till today. Well, yeah. it's, it's even, it's even more than that. Um, really the characters that came out of the death of Superman to this day remain some of DC's, I mean, some of their better characters that have been created yeah. in the last yeah. 20, 30 years. I mean, obviously, Connor, I mean, very, you know, let's, uh, we're talking. He got, pre- he got changed. Pre-New I mean, 52. Yeah. 
but but uh, Connor, fantastic character. Steel, a very, very popular yeah. character with a huge fan base. The Eradicator, eh, he comes and goes, but I, I actually still like the Eradicator. And Cyborg Superman, obviously a huge comeback in, Green, in the Green Lantern comics yeah. the last yeah. few years as one of the best villains in the DC universe. So, you know, if nothing else, we got three and a half fantastic characters uh, out of the Death of Superman comic company uh, dc made a shitload of money uh, a bunch of new eyes got on the comics um and it's no more or less ridiculous than anything you know else, it's really. this is actually one of those stories that had really good seeds for me and if they pre-52 if they were gonna go and rewrite something it's this is actually one of the books i really like someone like jeff johns or someone else to like take it seriously and rewrite it like Kind of plug in the holes, like, you know, fix some of the stuff, keep the good seeds, keep the good ideas. You know, kind of like Jeff Johns, who respected the history in Green Lantern Rebirth and considered all aspects of it and, you know, explained things that didn't make sense and so on and just kind of completely redid it, made you rethink the silly stuff that you read and that didn't make sense to you. I almost would love it. I mean, this is, of course, it was pre-52 that if someone would go back and rewrite the story as a whole. And it is a fantastic story if someone just takes it seriously. Now, I actually read the novelization of The Death of Superman. Okay. DC, DC's done novelizations of a lot of their big story arcs. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's it, I remember it being pretty good. I, I don't remember it being too overly goofy. It went through the death and return. They sort of did write out certain aspects and, and explain some stuff better. Yeah. I mean, obviously, it's been years and years. And, you know, this. what always uh, hit me was it was the regular people wearing, like, the Superman uh, emblem on the arm and the stuff. The armband. Like, yeah, 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 I was yeah. like, it was, it, was, it was very, very nicely done. So, yeah. Yeah. you know, maybe maybe in this new 52, I don't know, 10 years from now, they get to redo, redo the story. I don't know. Yeah. So, you know, maybe we do get a shot at this. Yeah. I mean, there have been... There are bad stories. Uh, I would never put the death in. Even the Return of Superman is a bad story. Yeah. For if you if you uh, take comic books for what they are, and, and you're willing to go with the whole genre and the whole the whole concept of the superhero, it is a fairly fun story. In fact, yeah. I um I, I actually read this would have been like when I was in like what grade would we have been in? We were in Death of Superman. Yeah, so like that was eighth nine, grade. Ninety two, so like eighth grade. So I would, like, in my eighth grade English class, I read the last, like, basically the monologue when Superman's dying that kind of had this, this kind of voiceover in the comic um, as, like, part of this, like, English report. Like, like and, like, because you don't know, if you just read it, you don't know what they're talking about until the last line is, like, the day a Superman died. Like, yeah. I always remember that. Yeah, 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 yeah no, and, it's and, crazy. And that until until then you don't actually realize what they were talking about, yeah, and, yeah. and it, but it all of a sudden like and it was, it was one of those things where I remember. Is that what you want read at your your funeral? Maybe okay. after the playing the bagpipes. Yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, dude, this is the day a Superman <laughs> died. Cue the bagpipes. But you drop know, the cape on my coffin. You, you do realize that I'm going to have <laughs> it change in the space. You do realize I'm going to have it changed to Jesus instead of Super. Oh, well, and yeah, it'll be fine. Jesus Man. That's fine. That's fine. You know you have to play uh, Amazing Grace in the Bagpipes at my funeral. Yes, yes, yes we know. St- we know. Okay. Star Trek Two, right? Yeah. Rathcon, right? Okay. And then shoot me in the space. All right. And then I need to be regenerated because fuck that. Well, you so. just come yes. back. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. You, I don't want. I don't, you've devoted your life to comics, so therefore comics have to bring you back. Right. I mean, I'm not super big on being like a little naked boy running through the fields <laughs> like, like Spock was, but I mean, if it gets me back, that's I'll, I'll, I'll deal with it. Go. So as long as I get to fight, uh, shit. Who was the Klingon in that? Oh, ah, oh, it's killing me. <laughs> I can't remember who the, who the guy who was that played the Doc Klingon. Brown. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Oh, Jesus. Ah, right. uh, my brain's Lloyd? dying. Christopher, huh? Christopher Lloyd. Lloyd. Christopher Lloyd. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um. Doctor Emmett Brown. Christopher Lloyd himself playing a Klingon. Good stuff. Okay. Death of Superman. That's it. Well, I mean, you talk about the ridiculousness of comics, and just to touch on that, you know, going back and reading some of those older, older comics. I mean, you watch. The early comics and how those were written to ten years later. I mean, they they all involved right? how they're how they're written to ten years. You know, Absolutely. every decade there's a shift, there's a change. I mean, yep. you know, look at the comic books we were reading when we were kids in the '90s versus the comics that we're reading yeah, it's yeah. Not the now. Same. They're 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 not even close, and you can't even compare today's comics to stuff from the '70s or the '80s because no. they're completely different. It's it's a different even audience, different times. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this brings me back to my whole reasoning. Like, a lot of the Ultimate Spider-Mans are retelling stories that are from the 60s yeah. and 70s. 
Hence why I'm like, I would actually really like to see a retelling of the death and return of Superman with a little more thought behind like it. Like a, a modern, more Yeah, a like modern, a modern like a, take. Yeah. And, you like know, they had like, the Earth-1 graphic novel, so why not yeah. say Earth-1 yeah. death of Superman? You know. Oh, shit. That's not a half bad idea. I mean, the argument is always that comic books are basically, they just tell the same stories over and over and over again. Right? Well, then just do and it. The, yeah. And this continuity is just like whatever. There's nothing new. It's just, the, just rehashing the same shit over and over again. Right. Why don't they literally just do it? I mean, it's... I, Here's it's, Jeff Johns yeah. and Jim Lee's Death of Superman. I'd buy that. Yeah, I'd buy that I'd in a buy heartbeat. That. I mean, this, this is the way you can put it. I mean, you, you got, you know, Green Lantern Rebirth. You got The Sinister Core. And, you know, you have your history of, like, DC Universe on your shelf, right? Wouldn't it be cool if you have, like, a renewed death and return of Superman? Now you could replace the old one that respects the old one, but also updates it, like, to a better story. Well, That's a, that's a damn good idea. Yeah. Thank you. And I, this but is please don't I've... exploit the shit out of it. Well, the, the whole point of it is exploit the shit. No, not like all, but, all at once, like Marvel yeah, does. But you know what I mean, but, though? It'd be like you put it in that hole in history right there. Yeah, but... Uh, to me, this is actually one of those long rants I've had time and time again where I'm always hearing people say, oh, well, they had to start bringing in new villains or whatnot to the ultimate Spider-Man and they had to change it up. That's not what I wanted. I I eat the stuff alive when they do like the spectacular Spider-Man cartoon or they do the – even the 90s Spider-Man cartoon and the 90s X-Men cartoon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. when they adapted stories. those episodes? When they bring in stuff from the comics. Absolutely. Hell, even Batman the Animated Series. I literally would fall over sometimes when I'd realize what story they adapted for an episode. Because well, I mean, one of my favorites of the Justice League Unlimited is the, the um, what, uh, For the Man Who Has Everything. Yeah. The Superman one with uh, Mercy, with the Black Mercy. I mean, that's, mm-hmm. that's a great episode. Well, and, and it's also, I mean, you get great things. It shows great things from the comic books when you see it in a different format. But we also get different things from that format. I mean, yeah. the comic books got Harley Quinn out of the cartoons. Yeah. So, so it's, I, I wholeheartedly agree with Toby that there's room in comics for basically – modernizing old stories without having to worry so much about this general sense of, well, at some point we have to start giving something new. You really don't. You don't have to turn Cable into Wolverine. Exactly. You don't have to. That's where, that's well, where, where go for it. Oh, Sorry. I was going to say, well, you, well, you're sort of, they're always rehashing the same yeah. stories. Yeah. And, and I, I like new stories of the characters and I like to see the universes continue when you basically go, yeah. eh. The origin matters, last issue matters, everything else, whatever. But if they did a new, you know, Death of the Phoenix, if they did a yeah. new, you know... Yeah, uh, like Dark Phoenix Saga? Death, Right, Dark Phoenix Saga. If they did yeah. a new, like, you know, take on the Frank Miller, Electra, Daredevil, Bullseye stuff. If they did a new, like... I mean, I know Marvel's got, like, that um, Marvel Season 1. Season one yeah. yeah. But, I mean, in all honesty... They're mostly like I mean uh, nobody. The origin no, stuff we've no done na- so many times, too. right? Yeah. Get away from the origins. Take your yeah. classic, best, big, fondly remembered story arcs, modernize them. Do like the first Superman Flash race, you know? Yeah, redo exactly. That in, in a modern. This is exactly story. what I would like to see, yeah. and uh, uh, this is why I think this is where the Ultimate Universe started dying. Is the minute they went away from that? Yeah. The minute they started combining characters, the minute they started trying to do new things for the sake of doing new things. That's when I went to, to shitter. I mean, I yeah. love the whole yeah. rehashing old stuff. Well, yeah. do any of us pick up Ultimate Books right now? No. Um, I, the last Ultimate book I read outside of the first couple issues of Ultimates 3 and Ultimatum was like Ultimate Spidey, like 64 or whatever. Well, I mean, here, like, here's I the thing. I thought it was the, the, I thought it was the books, non-dialogue issue it's from... It's so long. The Ultimate books are no longer the Ultimate books. This, yeah. this is the problem right no. now, right? I mean, they started as something fresh, something different, and somewhere in, somewhere in their line, they lost that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, I'm probably the only one here who still dabbles in the Ultimate books a little bit. I'm not reading them constantly. I've sort of checked out the first issue of like the new Ultimate Spider-Man relaunch, and I'm curious to read some more, but haven't got a chance yet. Um, all in all, I just got so burnt out with Ultimatum that I walked away for yeah. a while, and I'm just now starting to kind of get a sense of what they're doing and which of the books are like I've checked out the new Ultimate X Men. I'm actually really curious about it. That. My well, one of my current favorite artists is on it right now, so I'm kind of curious about it. I, I think what happened with Ultimatum is Ultimatum took 
all of these care all, all the, this world this ultimate world this new telling this new kind of thing and gave us the same old how can we you know just kind of you know, just slap you in the face with like, oh my god, I'm actually seeing this. You know, like when the blob is sitting there eating eating well, the wasp, and you're just like, well, ultimatum, ultimatum did to the ultimate universe what fear itself did to the Marvel universe. Nothing. Yeah, um, honestly, it changed almost nothing. Well, it was it was basically it made no lasting impact to me. To me, the ultimate universe was this separate modern retelling. But when we yeah. got to ultimatum, it became it's just an alternate. Marvel Universe. Yeah, which is where, and, where it lost everybody. Yeah. See, to me, what Ultimatum did, and this is actually something I kind of feel is a closer tie, what Ultimatum did to the Ultimate Universe, I kind of feel is what House of M did to the X-Men. It just kind of went through and kind of changed all the rules and kind of started this whole relaunch to... But, but did it really? Re- I mean, I don't feel... I mean, I didn't read every issue of every series that followed it, but Spidey seemed... Pretty much the same. Yeah, Spidey was Spidey's the same. The only thing that really stayed the same. Yeah, X Men. X Men by Loeb was had potential, but it didn't go anywhere. And yeah, it, I, it's just now sort of getting somewhere with the new Ultimate X Men. But at this is, point in time, like even yeah. after reading all the Ultimates, the old Ultimate Avengers, yeah. the first one, I was like, eh. I wasn't interested to read Ult- or Avengers two or Ultimate Avengers three. I'm behind on those specifically. I need to get the omnibus that they're putting out. Yeah. Nah. But yeah, yeah it, just, it, it, it became it became an alternate Marvel reality. It was no yeah. longer the yeah. ultimate Marvel universe. But I still remember, as sort of you were just saying, I remember when they first launched that and they were getting to like the first Venom story and how excited everybody was yeah. for this modern telling or, of or Venom. Or that, that Cyclops might have been a spy mm-hmm. for Magneto. I mean, this is the page when you see yeah. him like talking to Magneto, like, oh my god. You know, there's a lot of excitement there. Well, you guys you guys all read these when they were coming out in issues. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wasn't in comic books at the time, so okay. when I came into the Ultimate Universe, I came in with the trades. And reading those Ultimate Spider-Man books and those Ultimate X-Men books, I was like, oh, what's going to happen yeah, next? No, this they're, is they're really, really, really good books. Really good. For, for the first six or eight volumes. Yeah, Spider Man did okay, like, and then it started to falter, and then Ultimatum is what killed it. Yeah, and then Ultimate X Men was fairly. You lasted a lot longer than I did. Yeah, well, Ultimate X Men was fairly good up until the literally creators. It, it, yeah. Well, here's the thing. I mean, the Ultimate books were very good until they started having a rotation of creative teams. Yeah. So that's kind of where it lost its See, identity. To me, that's actually where it's kind of funny you put it that way because. Mm-hmm. The only thing that was really that consistent in that whole realm of things was Ultimate Spider-Man. Like, yes, you had Ultimates 1 and 2 by the same yeah. team, but Ultimate Fantastic Four was plagued from its from the very well, beginning. Which is the worst book uh, of the Ultimate, Ultimate books. Well, Ultimate FF, and I mean, Ultimate Team-Up was cool, but it was <clears> totally <throat> unconnected to everything no, else. Yeah, that didn't work for me. The FF yeah. didn't work. Uh, FF uh, was bad. Yeah, that was really bad. And there was the Ultimate... Uh, Hulk Wolverine that was delayed forever and then finally yeah, finished. That doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. I mean, I actually really like the ultimate Daredevil Electra story, personally. I just, it was a different take on it. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I didn't mind those. And, like, even to a degree, I didn't really mind the ultimate Iron Man stories when they came out. But again, yeah. it, by that point, it stopped feeling like a modern retelling of Iron well, it's, Man. It was again, more just a. Yeah, they lost their identity. I mean, yeah. for a while, their X Men had a creative switch, but they, at least it was like the same guys in charge of the book. Yeah. The minute they were no longer there, I feel like that's when it lost its identity. Yeah. All right. Well, we're actually already at our time. We haven't talked X Sanction, we haven't done picks. So why don't we. Um, Charlie, bullet, bullet Charlie. through this? No. Charlie, you're going to be, be on next week. No, we're done. Yeah. We're, uh, this, oh, we're this, done. This is our cutoff point. We got to sure. keep it under a certain time length, where our uh, lips and account goes over the over the limit. So, so Charlie, you're on next week. Sure, we're talking ecstatics or ex- ecstatics. ecstatics. <laughs> All right, I'll talk ecstatics. We're talking <laughs> ex-sanction number three. I haven't yeah. even had a chance to read it. Give me a few days to read it. We'll all be here. Maybe we can just do like a X sanction and then like a double pick next week. We'll make up for it because I don't. I don't double know. pick. Is there is there <laughs> anything pick. is there anything else coming out? Is there any news this week? I don't know. We'll find out as the week goes on. We'll see. No. We'll see what happens. We'll play it by ear. Um, yeah, I, I think our, our pick for this week should be go read the Death and Return of Superman. It's actually pretty decent. Yeah. So there you go. It sucks. The world without world without Superman is not available. Really? Yeah, to the best of my knowledge, it's not. It's That's my favorite. Not, that was one of my favorites. Still, they, well, they had that that thick, thick hardcover. hardcover. Uh, is that in that? 
I believe that's Yeah, I think it is. Okay, because I know Death is available and Return well, of Superman's available, but I don't know if they could World Without Superman think is or used I think copies. Some of it is in that. I don't think they did all of Yeah, cuz it ran through quite a few books. Well, I'll check my I'll check my copy when I get home and have yeah. a report for you next check week. Check that. Check I'm in the library. I'm yeah. interested. Cuz yeah, I don't look it up Yeah, online. the World of Superman, uh, or Death or in the Family, the Batman it's, one, those were like two of my iconic books. It's called well, What's actually this book called? It's not called it's World Death of and Return. Death and Return of Superman. No, no, no. What's no. the book called? It's like um, Funeral, Funeral for, for a, a Friend. friend. Yeah, that's, what, that's what it was. Yeah, Funeral for a Friend. Yeah. Okay, I recommend those books. I think we all recommend those books. All right. Uh, cool. Yeah, we'll we'll do some catch up next. Uh, this episode ran too long. Is that damn Watchmen two talk? I totally forgot about that. <laughs> you mean before Watchmen? <laughs> Whatever. Stop before. calling it Watchmen two. Watchmen one point five. Oh, um, Watchmen yeah. zero. Well, if you like this episode and you want to hear more episodes, you can go to www.geekbox.net and download all the other episodes of this, as well as the Comedy Button and the Geekbox podcast, which uh, Brock was on like Last, twice, twice recently. recently yeah. yeah, so Brock's on there. I'll be delaying for the next couple of weeks. I gotta, yeah, gotta get back in at the good graces. You, you can also go no. on. <laughs> do you have a? Do you guys have a site yet? Uh, we have the infinitelongbox.libsyn.com. Okay, Infinite Long Box. And Infinite Long Box is also on Twitter. It's just yeah. Infinite Long Box, yep. if I'm correct. Okay. Twitter. I've been retweeting that. I know. What's up? <laughs> uh, that's... Do, you even re- do you even tweet mine? Your what? My, my blog. <laughs> um, um, I yeah, would re- the fan I did. If you were on Twitter, I would retweet your post. Why don't you just originally tweet it? No. Because then what it's not technically oh, you got a fan retweeting. That did, can you, yeah. can you, you got a fan that did it. Oh, it yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. No, I, I saw that. I retweeted that. Yeah. See? Yeah. All right. So he retweet tweets your fans who tweet. Yeah. Yeah. Not yeah. Me. Because what someone a, asked. Someone like, do we, do we, we left someone off. They're like, <laughs> this is all unfold. <laughs> you know, we've been trying to get him on there. It's, it's, too, much, know, it's too much tweeting. Uh, hey, I want to do a shout out to uh, Cross X Hunter on the forum. Thank you for correcting me on the avatar. I did not know that actually about what was uh, the correction. It was like uh, Korra is being trained by the son of Ang the avatar. Oh, okay. So I actually didn't know that. I actually really thought she was the daughter of the two, the oh. Katara. Yep. I actually had wrong information. So sorry about that. There you go. Yep. Thank good, you. Good. Yep. We're uh, human. Um, no, I just you know thanks. I didn't. I really didn't know. So if you want to send us an email, you can send it to uh, the comic conspiracy at geekbox.net or go to the contact form on geekbox.net. There's contact there. Go to forums at geekbox.net. Talk to us in the comics. We're actually getting a little little, little uptick in the comic uh, form recently. There's been a handful of new people posting there, so you should come join us. It's some good, good conversation. Um, yeah, you can always come to the store one one five dash A East Fremont Ave, Sunnyvale, California nine four zero eight seven. Don't come, try uh, to sell pants. Come buy some stuff. Oh, <laughs> I should. I also need to say, uh, the new laptop we've been recording. Well, new quote unquote that we've been recording on is a donation from our employee and good friend Marshall, who's who started working here a little while back. Who works fire only Marshall. on Thursdays by himself. He right. has a title. He's the fire marshal. Oh, so, so Marshall, who has disavowed all things podcast related, <laughs> it's very much need of a Ryan as a fire marshal. Four of the five employees want to be on here. Marshall's like, I'm not gonna be in this stupid podcast. Um, well, there's always gotta be somebody. Yeah, I know. Uh, he has he's decreed that. Don't come to the store on Thursday asking for myself or Brock or, or, or Toby or Charlie because we're not here on Thursday. So if you're planning a international vacation, <laughs> I'm not even kidding. We've had people come. I don't probably not for us for the Geek Box, but it, put this over to the Geek Box people too. If you come here looking for Ryan Scott or, or myself or to give us food or candy or whatever people do when they come here, high probability Tuesday. <laughs> Don't show up on Thursday because Marshall's here and he gets kind of annoyed when <laughs> podcast people come. And he's like, because he doesn't. No, this, wanna, is, this is why we just make him famous for not being on the. He doesn't want to be. On he's, the, he's the fire marshal. He, he is this. He's going to be a legend. Wrapped in a puzzle, wrapped in a cheese burrito that like you can't get into his head. We don't with an know, old baseball cap. We don't know. No one knows anything about Marshall. He's he's this ancient man in a thirty-two year old body. That that like he's how just, long have you known Marshall? Uh, since I was fourteen. And you know nothing about this man? No, no one knows anything. I, I well, no, no. I don't know how to spell his last name. Okay, who okay. who is who is mysterious? Is it Charlie's friend? No, no, no. I know him. I, oh, I, I, I know. Charlie's he has friend. a legend on his own. I know Charlie. He's the red hat man. He is legend here. Yeah. No one knows anything about it except for you, I guess. I know. Well, <laughs> I know about it. Oh yeah, but he's. So anyway, I just keep my mouth shut. Anyway, anyway, if you want to see Ryan or me, it's Mondays and Tuesdays. Yeah, if you want to see 
Well, no one wants to see anyone. No one wants to see me or Brock either, but it's, it's always <laughs> yeah, just Ryan true. Scott. Is Ryan Scott here? Um, no, Ryan's never here. If you're a Geek Bucks person, he's never at the store unless we're recording normally. So there you go. But but feel free to stop by any time. Yeah. Just Thursdays are okay, too. Chit-chat and buy some books. Yeah. Note that Marshall hates everyone that listens to the podcast. So if <laughs> Marshall, up, ha- Marshall hates everybody. If you show up on yeah. Thursday, he's just going to tell you to leave the store. Um, unless you bring him uh, delicious sharks. Uh, stuff because he likes sharks and he likes League of Legends. So if you tell him you play League of Legends, he likes your, hockey. He'll be you your guys, best friend. Are you guys going to talk about that tomorrow? He likes hockey. He that, loves hockey. That guy that died playing League of Legends. I know nothing about. You that. didn't see that? You didn't see that? No. I re- I got it off of Reddit. It was some yeah. guy sits there and he's playing in an internet cafe or something in was it Korea? <laughs> something like that. And he's dead for he, nine he, hours he and he nobody played, notices. Oh, well, yeah. that happens he all the played. time over there. Yes, yes, it like, does. That's but it was fun. League of Legends. Yeah, whatever. I was just wondering if Scott was playing him. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he's not doing anything anymore for <laughs> nine hours. I wonder what happened. All right, all right. We're going to go. Uh, Digital.comicsconspiracy.biz. You can buy a digital comics on there. Conspiratorbrock.com. Go visit Brock. There's blog. a sale right now? There's a... No. Oh, no. The, the, the Flashpoint sale just ended, but I think a lot of people bought stuff on Oh, I missed stuff. it. They always do weekend sales. Friday uh, through Friday through Sunday. Yeah, I, yeah. I actually would have jumped on that. I'm Ryan Higgins Ryan on Twitter. Toby's Toby XI. Charlie... What the hell is your Twitter in- handle? Insanity in-, in Chaos. Insanity in Chaos, and you rarely post... Uh, I'm posting oh, he's, about he's, once a week. He's starting. Oh, okay. He's starting. Okay. Good, good, good. I'm and trying to be better to about it, too. Account. Yeah. God damn it. Okay. Come okay. on, Brock. Once come you're on, on. It's, it's fun. Okay. I hate Twitter. I, I still don't quite understand it. It's okay, Brock. So just come on. Just, just do it with me. The, why would just, I, just do, do it with me. Just do it with me. For? Come on. We could be the two newbies. What do we put a pound on for? The what? The pound symbol. What is it for? That's the hashtag. Oh, the hashtag. What is that for? It's to. It's a topic. To mark your post with a it's a it's a top, it's, it's like talk. the P on it. It's, it's, it's kind of no, no, it's to unify it. It's to unify. Like you go, I make a comic book uh, reference hashtag comic book reference. Or you know, that's a dumb example, but, but you, you get sure, my point. Sure, yeah. sure, sure. It's usually used for jokes, but a lot of people talk use to it for, Omar for actual talk to Omar. You know Omar. He he knows all about the Twitter stuff and visit him at the uh, comics and the kind website and so on. So yeah, a little shout out to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll oh, get the correct uh, website out next. I don't, I don't next we can have Omar on here. We should. We yeah. should have him talk about that miniature game. Well, we can have really him on here. We're going to do like a Heroclix episode. Yeah, him we've, and Gage. We've you, converted. Oh, yeah. Do the Heroclix and see if you can do the Heroclix episode Charlie when I'm be gone. Because yeah. I won't be here on the 27th. We've we've converted a, a couple of our customers, some pretty hardcore Heroclix fans. So, okay. We're done. We're way over our time. Right now. <laughs> um, we will be back uh, next week for X Sanction, some picks, and some other crap. Double, right. double picks. Double picks. Double picks. All right. See you guys later.